Hi everybody, it's Yasmin. I'm ready to do my Unity Online radio show. Call now with your question or comment. Here we are. That's 816-251-3555. Hi Sherry. Say hi if you're on there. This is Astrology with Yasmin. It's Astrology with me. Hello everybody, it's Yasmin Boland here, ready to talk to you. I can't wait. My name is Yasmin Boland. I'm an astrologer. I'm a moonologer. I'm a best-selling Hay House author of books including the Moonology Diary 2021 and the Moonology Diary 2022 and the Moonology Diary 2020. I mean, so many diaries. Just been editing the 2022 one, actually. I'm actually coming to you live on Facebook on my Yasmin Boland page and on unityonlineradio.org. Um... I would love to take your calls. I will give you the number. It's uh, 816-251-3555. That's 816-251-3555. Don't be shy. Give me a call. Let me look at your horoscope chart. When you ring up, you'll actually speak to, I think you'll get Louis, who's on the line. And I think he will take your uh, time, date and place of birth so that I can actually cast your chart. And uh, yeah, it's very good. Um, someone on Facebook is Haley is saying, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I wasn't here last week. I'm sorry. Um, I was actually really not very well for about, well, I would say 10 days. I was really under the weather. I don't know if I had coronavirus because the UK government didn't want to give me a test because I didn't have exactly the right symptoms. Although some of you will know Kyle Gray, who's the angel guy. And Kyle um, had coronavirus, as you might know. He wrote about it. And uh, I spoke to him when I was unwell and I told him my symptoms. And he said, yeah, well, that's basically what I had. So who knows? Anyway, I also have um, a friend who I've actually, I think I've had her on this show, but I'm definitely going to have her on the show again. Um, her name is Laura Day. And uh, she's probably the best psychic that I've ever encountered in my 20 or 25 years of doing this work so I've encountered a lot of psychics across the years that my old friend Deidre she she's pretty good too but I've I've tested Laura robustly over the years and uh, since I've known her anyway we were chatting last week about something and uh, I think we might have been doing a little swap as we do sometimes a bit of astro for a bit of psychic um, Laura really works with intuition Anyway, and she said, Yasmin, uh, you know, I, are you feeling okay? And I said, well, I actually I haven't been that well. And, um, and she said, mm, you know what? You need to take it really easy. So I was like, oh, really? And she said, yeah, because otherwise you're just going to get worse. And this was about, I think, Thursday or Friday last week. Feels like a lifetime ago. And I said, okay, fine, I'll take it really easy over the weekend. She said, no, 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 no. You need to take it easy all next week as well. So I'm taking it all easy this week, quite easy, relatively speaking. She said, I don't want you going out for brisk walks. I don't want you racing around the house up and down. She said, you just need to settle down and be easy and take it easy. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm taking it easy. I feel, weirdly enough, it has been about 12 days now, and I do still have a little sniffle, which is a bit weird. So I'm taking her very seriously and drinking chicken broth and eating warming meals and all that. Um, anyway, Laura Day is going to be on the show in a few weeks' time, so if you like the sound of her, wait, because uh, she'll be on, on that. She's also going to be joining me for an online event. She won't be talking, but she's taking part. So I think if it's good enough for Laura Day, that's a pretty, pretty big compliment. My, uh, I've got an event coming up at the Open Centre. It's online. The Open Centre in New York City, uh, which is going to be all about the rituals that you can use sort of to end the year because we've got the Sagittarius eclipse coming. And uh, also um, just rituals that you can use every new moon. So if you'd like to learn about how to use essential oils and altars and affirmations and, you know, all sorts of things, um, 
how to ground the energies, really how to create new moon ceremonies. If you'd like to do any of that, uh, I would love to help you with that. Laura's going to be in the audience, I should make that very clear, uh, not, not taking part this time. Um, just go to uh, Open Centre, the Open Centre in New York and just Google Yasmin and you'll find me. The event is called, um, what's it called? Rituals on the Day of an Auspicious New Moon Eclipse. It's a very long title. I'm sure if you just Google rituals on, uh, rituals on the Day of an Auspicious New Moon Eclipse. It's going to be really fun. Anyway. So what are we going to talk about today? We are now in the waxing cycle of the moon. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and what it means. Um, going to talk about intentions you hopefully set at the time of the new moon. Um, and we're going to talk about the difference between making wishes and doing nothing versus taking inspired action. Plus, I will be taking your calls. So uh, please do call in because honestly... My absolutely favourite thing about um, doing this show is speaking to people. So, and especially if you're on Facebook, and I know there are loads of people there who um, are always after a reading of some description or other. Well, this is your chance, free reading from me, with pleasure. You just have to call 816 251 3555 and I will take your call and we can talk about your chart and we can talk about all sorts of things and I'm also going to be doing some um, card readings for anybody who wants a card reading so let's start off by talking about the waxing cycle of the moon hands up if you know what the waxing cycle of the moon is um, basically there are two main cycles of the moon. The first is the waxing cycle and the second is the waning cycle. So the waxing cycle takes place from um, the new moon to the full moon. And the waning cycle takes place from the full moon back to the new moon. So the entire lunar cycle takes about, um, about a month, which is where we get the word moon, as I always like to say, because I always think of it whenever I say it takes a month. Whereas, yeah, the word moon, M-O-O-N-T-H, is where the word month comes from and it's related to the moon. And in fact, back in the day, we actually used moon calendars. It's only now, I mean, I guess you could say thanks to the patriarchy that we use solar calendars. Why the patriarchy? Because, well, the sun is... Um, the sun is masculine, patriarchal. The moon is feminine, matriarchal. Why? A mystery. Nobody can answer that question. Uh, but in astrology, the sun is very yang. It's very masculine. And, and I think in most symbology. And uh, the moon is very yin, very quiet and gentle and very feminine. So there you go. Now, one interesting thing that keeps coming up when I talk about this these days is, um, you know, the whole thing about gender fluidity and what about if you know you're a transgender person and you maybe were born a male and now you're female does that mean you've gone from being a solar type to being a lunar type well i mean honestly it's such a new area i'm almost a little bit scared to say anything in case i say the wrong thing um but i would say you know just say you were born in a male body but you've since become come to identify as as a feminine as feminine you are probably always a lunar type you know probably uh, I would say I don't think you switch from sun to moon I think you're probably born with one or the other and if you're a man but you feel really feminine and you're aligned with the moon and you feel more yin I mean to me that would make sense there's a lot of debate over this at the moment and I be honest I don't know much about it what I do know I'll just say why not I used to be a journalist and um, probably about 15 years ago I did an interview for an English magazine over the phone with um, someone who had been born a man and had since become a woman and identified completely as a woman and um, it's the only interview that I've ever done during which time I cried. I cried over the phone. Hopefully, I think relatively discreetly, but it was tragically sad the way this person had been um, picked on, 
basically the whole of their life and uh, so that's sort of all I really know on a personal level about about this subject now would that person have identified with the Sun as a young man and now identified as with the moon as a woman my guess was would be that person had always felt feminine and would always have identified with the moon. I just thought I'd address the elephant in the room because nowadays every time you would you talk about genders or you know even when I talk about goddesses this whole gender fluidity thing comes up. My son is 14 so you know he he keeps me abreast of all this. So there we go. Um right. So now what about this waxing and waning cycle? Well, the waxing cycle is as I said from the new moon to the full moon and it's very much the yang part of the cycle because it's about the new moon is very yin but as soon as we get out of the yin you get um it's like the it's when you do all your set all your intentions and you come up with what it is you're going to do so that's very yang it's very like you know to continue the the astrology symbology it's very much about um you know mars would be the waxing cycle because mars chases doesn't it you know whereas venus attracts it's a very different thing and uh so yeah so it's very much um a, a yang cycle the waxing cycle which is what we're in now it's about going out and getting stuff and you know that's a bit of a problem for you know when you're feeling like i am right now um, I really could do with five days in bed. In fact, Laura Day said to me, um, she said, um, only do work on the couch or in bed for the coming week. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm editing my Moonology Diary 2022 this week and it's a bit hard to do that in bed because I need a desk because I need to use my mouse and all that. So sometimes it's not easy to be in touch with the waning and the waxing cycle. But I think that's when we tend to do things like, you know, what I've done, which is get a cold or the flu or Corona 19, COVID-19 or whatever I've got. It's when we're out of sync with the lunar cycle that troubles seem to start. That's my opinion anyway. Um, so, yeah, we're in the waxing cycle. So now is very much the time to go after whatever it is that you want in life. You know, chase your dreams. Hopefully you set some intentions and goals at the time of the new moon last week. Did you? Did you set some goals? Did you set some intentions? Did you write them down? One of the reasons why I like to write my intentions down and not burn them <laughs> is because I like to be able to refer back to them. And I always say to people, you may be more enlightened than I am because I think if I were truly enlightened, I would be able to write down my intentions and just let them leave them, let them go out to the universe. Um, you know, and I would just... I mean, that's the best thing you can do to them. You just write them down, you burn them and you forget about them and then they will start to manifest. But I am more left-brained than that and I like to have proof. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, I used to be a journalist. So, you know, with being a journalist, you don't just take things on trust. You investigate and you test and you research. So I like to be able to look back. So if you did write your wishes down and you didn't burn them, now would be a really good time to think, OK, let's have a look at what my wishes were, you know, and did I actually um, have I actually been living the life that I need to to live in order to make them come true? So, for example, just say if one of your wishes is to, you know, get in shape, I'm trying to be politically correct again, get in shape, not I'm going to say lose weight. But, you know, if you're if you're wanting to get in shape, you know, like, well, you're going to have to do some exercise. Like, I'm banned from doing exercise by Laura this week, so that's good. I don't, I can't do any, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, you might want to go walking or get on the treadmill or, you know, I mean, we can't go to the gym at the moment, most places in the world. I think in Australia they can go to the gym, but in the UK definitely we can't go to the gym right now. But, you know, what can you do to kind of get fit, you know? Um, I just want to... Do a little interlude and let you know if you would like me to look at your chart for free there is no one on the line right now no one so if you're in the states and you would like me to look at your chart 
this is your chance. You just have to dial 816-251-3555, 816-251-3555, and I will take your call with pleasure. Um, yeah, okay. So Elizabeth says, I don't go to the gym anytime that's on Facebook. Well, that's fine. I mean, there's no need to go to the gym if you don't want to get fit, if you don't want to be in shape, or, you know, maybe you have other ways of going, of getting in shape. I've actually been studying yin yoga, okay, for example. So anyway, so back to the waxing cycle. So what you really want to be doing now is looking at the wishes that you made, um, Oh, good, we've got people calling in now. Um, the wishes that you made a week ago, are you doing what you need to do in order to make those dreams come true? Okay? Are you doing what you need to do in order to make your new moon wishes come true? Because some people have this idea that you just write them down and that's it. Then they're going to come true. But, oh, wow, we've got loads of people calling in now. <laughs> Excellent. I really want to look at your charts. So, you know, that's my pleasure. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, how are you doing with that? Oh, someone on Facebook saying, what is the number again? 816-251-3555. 816-251-3555. If you're calling on Facebook, the number is in the description. All right, so now we have loads of people who've called in. Thank you, I'm so happy. Um, nobody's been screened yet, so I won't, I won't take the call yet. So, okay, so basically... Um, we're on the way to the full moon. And when we get to the full moon, there's going to be like the emotional explosion. An emotional explosion. It's going to be big. Uh, we are moving into the most intense astrology of 2021. The most intense astrology of 20, uh, sorry, of 2020. I keep writing about 2021 and we've got it on the brain. And it's going to be massive. Okay, it's going to be massive. Um, we're going to have eclipses, we're going to have planets changing signs, we're going to have what's called the Great Conjunction. Honestly, the rest of the year is looking really intense. Okay, we have, a, we have, we have now got loads of people on the line, one screened call, so let's speak to, that means that her uh, time, date and place of birth have been taken down. Um, so let's go to line one. Shirley, are you there? Shirley, Shirley? Surely, Shirley. Hello, hello. Can't hear you. Can't hear Shirley, Louie. Hello, hello. Shirley, Louie, anybody? Nope. Nobody's answering. That's a bit strange. Louie, is there uh, Shirley on the line? Okay, well, while we get that sorted out, why don't we do a card for everybody? Now we've got Shirley and Pam screened and ready to go, but no Louie. Louie, what have I done? Have I done something wrong? I don't think so. That's very weird. Hello? Louie, if you're talking to me, I can't hear you. <laughs> Oh, well, I can always do Shirley's chart live and, uh, well, then hopefully they can hear me and even if I can't hear them and I'll just have to guess what her, we'll find out what to say to her. All right, here's a card for everybody. Louie, if you're listening to me, I would love to speak to Shirley on line one, but I can't hear you and I can't hear Shirley. Um, maybe you could put something in the chat. Here, hang on, let me just put this here. Hello. Uh, can you put Shirley, oops, Shirley on the line, please? Uh, hello. hello. Ah, Shirley, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Could you hear me saying hello, Shirley? Surely, Shirley, you're there and all that? Yes, and I kept saying hello, hello, hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, Shirley, what I did while I was waiting for you was I drew a card for everybody who's listening, okay? So I'll do a card just for you in a minute, but do you mind if I share this card oh. with everybody? Awesome. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. So if you are listening and you're wondering what the card says, 
Think of your most burning question. What are you wondering about? What's your most burning question? All right. I've got the answer for you on how to make it happen. Are you ready? Here we go. Confidence is the key to your success. Confidence is the key to your success. So in other words, whatever it is that you want to achieve, confidence is the key to your success. Now, in a weird way, it's always the key to success. Um, it's time for you to show the world what you've got, shine your light, have some pride. This card heralds the start of a new cycle for you when you're going to look and feel more gorgeous, more in the spotlight, and more like you have something worth showing off. If you want someone's attention, this card says it's coming. So there you go. All right, that's for everybody. Shirley, what about you personally? What do you want to know about today? Well, that really kind of fits on what I'm looking for because I've been in a relationship for a year and I'm wondering if I, if, if I should keep putting effort into it. It's been a... Uh, quite a learning lesson for me. Okay, what's been happening? Has he not been treating you right, he or she? He treats me wonderfully. I'm a I'm a Leo, uh, Scorpio rising, and he is a Gemini. I don't know what his rising sign is, but he is. Uh, he just kind of keeps me at arm's length. Mm. Tells me yes, everything's going good, and he's happy. Um, I just, I don't know. It's always this nagging thought in the back of my mind that are things really going to progress to another level? I'm 67, he's 65, so. It's time. <laughs> right, okay. Well, shall I draw you a card personally or do we, th let me see. Now, I'm going to draw you a card personally, Shirley, because that's what I said I would do. So I think the cards, you need your own card. Thing is, being you are a one, two, three, five-time Leo. You don't need anyone to ignore you. You need a lot of attention. So on the one hand, we could say, well, are you expecting too much attention? Um, on the other hand, you could say anyone who doesn't give you all the attention you need is not going to, you know, be right for you. Um, oh, okay. okay. So you've got the new moon in Taurus, which is very weird because it's got nothing to do with love. Oh, okay. No, here we go. Getting clear on what you want will, on what you value most, will help you find peace. Okay. Ah. So this card comes down to the law of attraction. Value yourself and others will value you too. So maybe you're not valuing yourself enough. Um, it can start signal the start of a new relationship or of sexier times. But getting clear on what you value most will help you find peace. So I suppose you need to decide how much you value certainty or how much you need to know where he's coming from. Um, ah. Hmm. Yes, I think that's basically the answer. It's not a bad time for you to be talking about okay. these things, actually. Um, it's, what, it's what, I'm sorry? It's not a bad time for you to have a conversation like this. How are you off financially? Is oh. everything okay financially? Uh, I'm, I'm fine financially. He is as well. We live about an hour apart from each other, so I only get to see him about once a week, and that's... That's the part I'm really struggling with. Well, I suppose then it comes down to how much do you value living where you live? You know, would you be willing to move for this guy? Maybe that's got something to do with the answer. Does that make any sense? It, it does, except he hasn't made any, any um, suggestion that that might be happening at some point, that I might come his direction, and I've already said I could leave my home and and go his direction without any issues. Right. So you feel like you I, feel I like commit. Yeah. You feel like you're a bit keener than he is. Then I'm what? You're a bit keener. You're a bit keener. You're a bit more keen than him. Yeah. Right. Well, I think you have to decide 
what do you value most? Having your once a week meeting or having a full time lover? Maybe that's part of it. You know, my dad was a psychiatrist. Ah. My dad was a psychiatrist and he always used to say, my beautiful old dad who passed away about 14, no, about 12 years ago, he always used to say, um, in a relationship, you have to decide what is and is not a deal breaker. So you might say, you know what, the fact that we live in different, you know, we live an hour apart, that's not a deal breaker for me. The fact that we only see each other once a week, that's not a deal breaker for me. Or you might say, you know what, that's a deal breaker for me. I want someone I'm going to be with all the time. So, you know, that's what it comes down to in terms of deciding what you really want. Um, in your chart, okay. you have you have like change in your chart, but long term. It's not like you've just got it this week. You've actually got romantic change kind of for the next few years. So, you know, being involved with someone who's a bit different to anyone you've been with in the past or actually online romance you know did you meet him online are we allowed to ask that yes i did meet him online and he is most definitely different than anybody i've ever been with before right well he he works with your chart i think you need to make that decision what really really matters to you shirley that's the big question here once you decide that then you know what your next okay. move is okay very good i sure appreciate your time oh thanks for calling shirley I will be back after the break, everybody. We're going to a break. So there you go. We're going to a break. Um, okay, I've now got loads of people on the line. I'm going to come to you next, Pam, if you can hear me. Um... Thank you for calling in. It makes it more interesting. So, anyone got any questions? Anyone want a card? Who wants a card? Facebook friends. Somebody said, what is this um, background? This is a Facebook background. It's just a Facebook background. <sighs> oh, hi, Shirley. I can see you. Oh, thank you for the healing. Yes, I would like some healing. Oh, thanks for calling in, Shirley. Think about what I said. Um, definitely a question of what do you value, you know, because maybe you'll think, well, I actually quite like him. He's kind of different, you know, and maybe you'll just, um, you'll be happy to stick with that for a while. All right, I've got about two minutes, so I'm going to do a card. I'm going to do a card first for Tam, who said he or she would like a card. Sorry, your name has flashed off the screen now. Tam, I don't know what your question is, but this is for you. Oh, Tam. Tam, put it in the comments. What is your question? I need to know. Tell me your question, Tam. Laurie, I'll tell you more about the astrology while I'm waiting for Tam to ask his or her question. Um, okay, so basically what's happening before the end of the year is we are getting eclipses and we are getting um, Jupiter and Saturn changing signs and then, uh, yeah, and then Jupiter and Saturn actually meeting. So it's massive. It's really, really big. So basically that's what I'm, I'm holding um, a couple of workshops um, towards the end of the year but oh will I become a breathwork facilitator okay let's do your card now that we know the question <laughs> um gosh I've got so many things to answer I'll, I'll tell you about the end of the end of year astrology once we go back after the break um Tam will I become a breathwork facilitator funnily enough communication is key there you go communication is key now, what does that mean? Well, for one thing, Gemini is an air sign. It's the new moon in Gemini. So it's very, I think it's a very good um, omen. Um, read more books is one of, these are my moonology cards. Now, possibly the best selling cards in the whole wide world. <laughs> Unbelievable, but true. Um, so, yes. So, Tam. Talk things through, journal about them, 
do some more reading or studying and just do it. This is a really, really good omen for being a breathwork facilitator because Gemini and breathwork go hand in hand. Um, Gemini actually, I think in traditional astrology, Gemini symbolises, well, I don't think I know, symbolises the lungs. So there you go. Um, so maybe it's a question of getting yourself online, you know, doing posts, doing Contact Facebook lives and all that. Oh, here we go. We're going back. That's Back into the fray. Five, 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 five. I'll tell you about the end of your astrology. Find out what's happening in the skies. Welcome back to Astrology with Yasmin. Hey everybody, it's Yasmin Boland here, back after the break. For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm an astrologer, I'm a moonologer, and I'm the best-selling Hay House author of lots of books, including the Moonology Diaries. The Moonology Diary 2021 is out now and selling like hotcakes. So if you want to get one, get it soon. You can get it anywhere you buy good books. So somebody was asking me on Facebook, because I'm doing a Facebook Live as I do this um, show, and somebody was asking me what is happening at the end of year um, astrology. What's going on in the end of the year astrology? And basically what's happening is we're going to have a couple of eclipses and we're going to have the move of Jupiter and Saturn into, into Aquarius and they're going to actually meet in Aquarius, which they haven't done since 1405. Um, I actually did a whole workshop about this if you want to find it online. If you're on my mailing list, you'll have probably been told about it. If you're not on my mailing list, just go to yasminboland.com and uh, just uh, sign up. It's, I think it's on the top right of the, of the homepage. Um, or you can just search in Google, Reclaim, R-E-C-L-A-I-M, Reclaim 2020. Because part of the uh, workshop, the idea was that we can still, you know, make 2020 great again. Um, so Reclaim Workshop Yasmin Boland. If you put that um, into Google, you'll find the workshop. And it was a really fun workshop we did for hundreds of people. I think, I think like 650 people or something were there. And uh, it was really fun, really, you know, it's big astrology. It's worth finding out about. It's more than I can tell you about right here and right now. Okay, so I will talk about it a bit more in a minute. I'll talk about the waning cycle a bit as well. But first of all, I want to take another call. So let's go to um, line two, which is Pam. Are you there, Pam? Yes, hi, Jasmine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. Doing well. So where are you right now? I am in California, Moraga, okay. California. Okay, but you were born in San Mateo, is that right? Correct. Right, that sounds sort of Spanish. Is that north or south of, in California? It's north. I'm in the Bay Area, so uh, ah. 40, 40 minutes outside of San Francisco. Okay, my obsession with America continues, and now my son is obsessed with America as well. And uh, he wants to join Space Force, which is in just outside of... California. I don't know. Is it in California? But it's in. Anybody know? Do you know by any chance, Pam? Space Force. I, no, I it's, don't know. it's where they shoot off all the rockets. I think it's. I think it might be in Nevada. Um, but he keeps saying, "Well, mummy, it's just near California, so you can go and live in LA, and I can be in Space Force." I'm like, "Sure, why not, darling? We just need to get a visa." <laughs> so that's the plan. <laughs> anyway, Pam, tell me what would you like to find out about today? I have your chart right in front of me. Do you know your so, chart? I should I, ask you. Hello? Do you know your chart? I should ask you before we launch into your question. Actually, I do. Yes, I know I'm Gemini rising and a lot of Scorpio. Yes, Scorpio, Sun, Scorpio, Moon, Venus in Scorpio, Neptune in Scorpio. Yeah. So what's your question today, young lady? So I have been... Um, I'm involved in a lawsuit, and I'm the uh, respondent or defendant, and the court has taken it under submission, and I'm just wondering if, when, if you can tell me when I might receive um, any notice, and if it is going to be in my favor. 
Okie dokie. All right. I really don't like these questions when they're about legal matters because they're so tense and they mean so much to people. Okay, so let us look at your chart. Now, the fact of the matter is, for one thing, you have Saturn conjunct the South Node in your natal chart, which means that, um, you know, legal matters aren't going to be your favourite thing. Um, is it the first one you've ever been involved with or have you had other legal matters in the past? Uh, this would be the first one I'm directly involved in. Okay. So what's going to happen very soon is that the planet of the law, Saturn, is going to move into your ninth house, which is basically the house of legal matters, and is going to very quickly go over your uh, south node and then conjoin your Saturn. So I'm afraid to say that unless you know 100% you're on the right side of the law here, you might have to um, improve your defence. Do you know, do you feel that you're on the right side of the law or do you think mm, it's a bit shaky? No, I do feel I'm on the right side of the law. Well, if you feel you're on the right side of the law, you should get a good ruling. But if you think it's a bit open to interpretation or you secretly think, well, you know, it could go either way, you might need to rethink your defence. That would be my advice to you. Shall I draw you a card? Sure, that would be great. Can you tell us vaguely about what it's about or is it too private? No, no, I, I'll, it's a little too private. It's too private, that's fair enough. Okay, so you got the full moon in Sagittarius card. Now that's interesting because Sagittarius is the sign of the law. Um, let me see. So, are you thinking too much about the details of your dilemma? Fretting over the minutia can be counterproductive. Um, this card is a reminder that while it's good to think things through, sometimes you need to step back and look at the bigger picture. What do you see about your current situation? What's the most positive thought you can have about it? Um, try and keep an open mind. I mean, funnily enough, in a way, the full moon in Sagittarius card, what it really signifies is that you're going to get a ruling. You know, I don't know if that's up in the air or not, but it certainly suggests it's going to come to a conclusion quite soon. And I don't think it really adds to what I've said. I think it really stays at if you think you're in the right, you're going to be lucky. If you're trying to pull a fast one, <laughs> which you say you're not, good on you, then you, then you should be fine as long as you're not trying to pull a fast one. Okay. All right. So, okay, and we just, just quite soon, but we don't have any cake for the timeline. Oh, I would say, I would say sooner rather than later. Because you got the full moon in Sagittarius card. So I would say sooner rather than later. I mean, I suppose that's, you know, COVID-19 depending, isn't it? They're not, are they doing these things online at the moment or? Um, well, they've taken it under submission, which means that they, they're going to decide based upon all the pleadings and they're not looking to any more arguments or any oral presentations or anything. Right, right. And are they making those decisions, you know, while people are in lockdown? And I know America's going to more, I know LA is going to more lockdown. They're closing all their restaurants, for example. Are you, are they processing these things? I believe so, yes. Okay. Well, I would honestly say that the full moon in Sagittarius card suggests you are going to get an answer sooner rather than later. And I just hope it goes your way. Um, you know, you're about to have your second Saturn return. So at the end of the day, if you don't win, I think you will learn some really important lessons. And if you learn the really good lessons, then, you know, that can really be useful, if not, you know, a pleasant thing. Okay. All right. Okay. Very much. appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pam. There you go. I don't think that was exactly the answer Pam wanted, but sometimes, um, sometimes the cards don't lie. When you get a full moon in Sagittarius card, it does mean that the answers are coming. So at least she's going to get the answers. That's something. 
All right, so I just want to um, talk about the difference between making wishes and doing nothing versus making wishes and taking inspired action because that's something I said I was going to talk about today and I'd like to do that. I do have lots of people on the line now, so I will take your calls as I will come back, but I just want to briefly address, address that question. So basically, when you make new moon wishes, you made them a week ago. Okay, when you're making new moon wishes, you either just make them and forget about them and surrender them to the universe, which sounds really good, or you make them, surrender them to the universe, and then you take inspired action. Okay, inspired action means you do something about them. You don't just sit there, you know, it's a bit like, it's a bit like making a wish to get a pizza, excuse me, making a wish to get a pizza and just sitting there and hoping that, you know, your mum or your neighbour or someone pops around with a pizza might happen if you're really good at manifesting. Or it might mean that you actually ring up the pizza parlour and dial a pizza and say, can you please give me a pizza? That would be inspired action if you wanted a pizza. So think of it like that. Think of it like that. All right. That's the difference. You can just make your wishes or you can make your wishes and actually do something about it. You know, so say, for example, if you want to find a job, Start going online and looking at the job sites. Tell your friends you're looking for a job. Ring your old boss and say, I'm actually needing a job. You know, that kind of stuff. That's the difference. On the one hand, if you are a supreme manifester and there are people out there who can do it, you know, you can literally just visualise it into your life. Most people, though, will do the visualisation and the affirmation and then they need to take inspired action and that's how they make it happen. Personally, if I'm manifesting something, if, if there's anything I can do about it, I do it. And, uh, and I'm said by my friends, I'm just touching wood, but I'm said by my friends to be a very good manifester. And I think it's because I do a combination of making the wishes and um, taking inspired action. All right, let's take another call. Okay, thank you for everyone calling in. I, I hope I can get through a few of them. Let's talk to Angelina on, uh, I'm not sure line, um, but yes, Angelina, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Hi, Angelina. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. I'm just doing your chart. Tell us what's going on for you right now, young lady. I don't know why I call everyone young lady, but I do. <laughs> um, just really wondering about three areas, um, finances, health, and marriage. Okay. So basically your whole life. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, um, let's have a look. Have you had your chart done before? I pulled it on your website, but I haven't really been able to completely understand the whole thing. Okay, all right. So you were born at 12.32 a.m. or p.m.? Uh, p.m. And plain view, is that two words or one word? One word. It's not coming up on my... I'm getting Plainview Denton, Plainview Hale, Plainview Haskell, Plainview Houston. It's it Hale, Plainview Hale. Okay, gosh, so many places in America have the same name. That must be so confusing for you guys. <laughs> All right, so what is it? Finances, health and relationship. Let's just, let's choose one. Which is the burning, burning question, Angelina? Okay, all right. And what's going on in the finances right now? Um, income is okay. Just would like to be in a better place financially. Okay, all right. So basically, I've been talking a little bit today about the Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto um, business that's going on in the skies. So what's happened is that for the past year, we've had Jupiter in Capricorn. For the past couple of years, we've had Saturn in Capricorn. And for the past, I think since, mm, gosh, I, get, I always get confused, but I think it was 2012, we've had Pluto in Capricorn. Now, all that is your money box. So basically, there has been a lot of stuff going on when it comes to money and you over the past couple of years or, you know, even over the past eight years. So you've been learning lessons. You've hopefully had some, you know, good luck or, you know, some successes. And one of the big things has been about working out 
what in your financial life has to be eradicated, um, how to reinvent yourself financially. Hopefully you've learned lessons about saving and spending and balancing your checkbook and all that kind of stuff. So there's a couple of things to note. The first is that Saturn and Jupiter, this is like the third time today I've said this. Obviously, it's like the big theme for the day. Um, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be changing signs in December. So in, in under a month, I think it's the... I think it's the 16th and the 19th or, or the 17th and the 19th of December that they're changing signs. And, you know, which day it is doesn't really matter. The point is they're going to be changing signs and life is going to change for everybody. It doesn't matter what sign you are. It doesn't matter what your rising sign is. It doesn't matter who you are. There's going to be change in your life. Now, for you, Angelina, it's especially important for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's going to be moving, they're going to be, because you're Gemini rising, this is true for everybody who's Gemini rising, they're going to be moving out of your eighth house and into your ninth house. So they're going to be moving out of your money zone. So you're going to have less pressure in your finances, but you're also going to have a little bit less ease as well. So what it's really going to be important will be to um, use any lessons you've learned, learned about finances ever uh, but especially in the last couple of years so think you know what have I learned about finances in the last couple of years of my life and also think about how you can transform your finances from the inside out what can you do to detox your finances what could you do to um, get rid of the dead wood in your financial life you know you need to kind of answer all those questions to yourself and then you will know what to do however there's a little bit more information that you need to know, which is that even though you're a Piscean, you're a five times Piscean, you've got the Sun, Saturn, Mars, Chiron and Mercury all in the sign of Pisces. Your little Venus, which is your love and abundance planet, is actually in the sign of Aquarius. So what's going to happen is that Jupiter and Saturn are going to move into Aquarius in mid-December, as I just mentioned, I'm just going to get the exact date for you. Hang on here. And then they're going to do something that they haven't done since, well, not in your lifetime, since 1405. <laughs> they're going to meet in the sign of Aquarius. They're going to conjoin. Okay. Now, funnily enough, they're going to do this on your Venus, which is your love and abundance planet. So it's actually going to impact your love life and your finances. So what I would, now, which way is it going to go really depends on how you're setting things up now. Like if you're financially precarious, then it could be some hard lessons in your face. If you've been working really hard, it can be when your hard work suddenly pays off. Um, in your love life, it will also impact your love life. Um, if your relationships, uh, are you single or attached? Attached. Okay, so if your relationship is going well, uh, it could go even better. Um, say if, you know, somehow get more serious or get happier, improve. But if the relationship is hanging by a thread, it could be around about then you decide, you know what, out with the old, in with the new, I can't deal with this anymore. <coughs> so... I know that sounds like I'm giving you an each way bet, but it really, it's basically, it's um, especially with Saturn, you know, with Saturn, one of the sayings is what you reap is what you sow. So it kind of depends where you are now is going to be, you know, it's going to be time to pay the piper. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does actually, it does. So, yeah, so that's all happening for you between now and the end of the year. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just choosing you a card. Is that all right? Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Do you want a card? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, so you got the mutable moon card, which says nothing is set in stone, which basically just adds to what I've been saying, which is what happens next kind of depends on how you're setting yourself up. So, you know, you need to be smart, basically, about what you're going to do. Face facts. Saturn's about to hit your Venus. Yeah. It's time to face facts. Okay. okay. How, is Thank that, you so much. Oh, that's not too, too uh, in your face? <laughs> no, actually, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, good. Good, good, good. 
All right, so thank you for calling in. Let me see if I can just take one more, shall I? One more call. Thanks for calling in, um, Angelina. What a beautiful name. I'm just, what I'm going to do as well, for anybody who's watching me on Facebook, I'm going to put the link in to my, um, my workshop, which is all about... Um, let's see if I can do that. I might have to put it as a comment to start with. Um, the Reclaim Workshop, because I think a lot of people will benefit from this. You can get the replay. Um, I think a lot of people will benefit from this because it will explain all the Jupiter Saturn business because whether you're Aquarius or you're Capricorn or you're Leo or you're Cancerian or whatever, it literally doesn't matter. Um, it's going to be a big, big deal having, um, having these two planets changing signs is a really big deal and the workshop I did I think probably a month ago now and it will tell you everything you need to know about the end of the year basically uh, just seeing if I can put it anywhere else but I don't think so okay so there you go lots happening between now and the end of the year stay tuned don't touch that dial because I'll be telling you about this every week Monday I think it's 4 p.m pacific 11 a.m eastern all right, let's go and see if we can fit in one more call at least, maybe two. Let's go to Eve on line four. Are you there, Miss Eve? Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm just putting your details into my computer. So you're a native New Yorker. Have you got the accent to match? Let's hear you. Can you can, can you say coffee for me, please? Coffee. Coffee. You don't have a real coffee about you. You maybe are an elegant New Yorker. Uh, I'm on the Western New York side. All oh, right. So you don't say coffee. You just say coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Not like coffee. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what they say on the telly, isn't it? Okay, now tell me what you need to know. Well, I, I'm, I've been, uh, you know, kind of like dabbling in the astrology and moonology, and I just recently ordered your book, which I just got in the mail, and I opened up the back and I saw you make mention of Charles Fillmore, and I am a Unity Buffalo uh, congregant, and that just kind of made my day that you mentioned uh, Charles Fillmore. But anyway, um, I love Charles Fillmore. Should we, should we tell people about Charles Fillmore? He, Charles Fillmore was one of the founders of um, Unity Church, which, and obviously this show goes out on Unity Online Radio. And I've been quite obsessed with um, his formula for forgiveness for many years. And it's actually in my Moonology book and it might be in my Moonology diary as well. So there you go. We have Charles Fillmore in common, Eve. So what do you need to know? Tell me. I, so, I just had a lot of some insight on my chart. Um, the other day I was listening to something and it was talking about the, the North Node and the South Node. And I, I realized that um, in this lifetime I must have made a correct decision because it was about children and that I had learned my lessons with children in some past lifetime maybe. Um, and I chose not to have children this time. So it kind of like made me feel like I made the right decision after all. And I just guess I want some more insight into my chart in general. Right. Well, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Well, let's talk about where the nodes are for you right now. So right now, the north node is in the ninth house and the, third, and the south node is in your third house. So you could say that right now... What you need is not empty communication, but the truth. Okay, so just think about that. Think about that. Like, where am I getting empty communication? Where do I need to know the truth about life? And um, I will say that in your chart, you know, I think having kids or being involved with children actually might not feel like it's what's right for you but it could also bring you happiness and it's not too late for you to you know foster a child or I wouldn't completely 
uh, say that. I think if you read about the North Node, you've actually got the North Node in your fourth house. So um, it won't, it would actually bring you a lot of happiness to, to help children or if you work for a children's charity or like I said, foster or babysit. I think you might find it actually works for you. Awesome. What do you think about that? I I do volunteer at the SBK. That's not with children, but that is with animals, and I have discovered that is one of my passions, working with wildlife. Oh, okay, beautiful. Okay, well, that's beautiful as well. Um, right now, you're in a healing cycle when it comes to your your relationships. So, uh, you know, focus on healing. Focus on people who feel like they're helping you heal. That's because you're Libra rising. Uh, and that goes for anyone who's liberalizing. It's very healing time. Oh, how's your love life actually, Eve? Um, I am five years out of a 20-year relationship, and I am doing a lot of healing, and I have no desire to be involved in a relationship, maybe because of past hurt. Um, but I think it's real important for me to get to know me right now. Right. Well, I have to keep disagreeing with everything you say. I'm really sorry, Eve. I just pulled you a card and we've got 25 seconds, okay? But let me tell you, you got the new moon in Libra card, your Libra rising, and it says a new romantic cycle begins. Now, whether that's a new cycle where you just work out who you are before you get involved again or someone appears quite soon, we'll wait and see. And if you're saying, I want to be single, well, maybe you will be single. But once you're ready for a relationship, I think that card means there's love coming. And guess what, Eve? I'm so sorry we're out of time, so I have to go now. But I hope that helps. Thank you, Louis. Thanks, Louis. Thanks, everybody on Facebook. I'm going back to the couch now. I'll see you next Monday.